I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Brian Jack Holder, and I'm a Liberty candidate for Iowa's 3rd Congressional District. Uh, the video you are about to watch is from the February 2015 uh, Central Committee meeting of the Republican Party of Pottawatomie County. So I uh, re-registered as a Republican back in December of 2014, about a month after the election. and. Uh, I re-registered as a Republican to run in the primary process with uh, Congressman David Young, the incumbent. So what you're about to watch uh, is a little video. I was allowed a few minutes to defend myself uh, before they voted uh, whether to let me back on the Central Committee of the Pottawatomie County uh, Republican Party. And the importance of being uh, involved in politics uh, is perfectly expressed with this uh, example. Uh, when uh, Senator Joni Ernst uh, was elected to the U.S. Senate, she resigned her uh, House or her uh, Senate seat in the Iowa Senate. And so uh, a special convention was held back in December down in, uh, in Clorinda or Shenandoah, I can't remember which town. And uh, I went down there to film that uh, event because there were uh, less than 100 Republicans that were going to select the candidate for the party to be on the ballot. And I felt that. Uh, a citizen journalist like myself should go down there and re record the event. So, but uh, being on the central committee allows you to be involved in the uh, in the special nominating convention in the case that your state representative or your state senator uh, leaves office or your uh, or your federal uh, representative or senator. So, the uh, they call a special convention and. Uh, Candidates run through the special convention. They give some speeches. So I recorded the speeches down there. And so the reason I wanted to be back on the Central Committee in Pot County is to be involved in the political process uh, of representative government. So uh, they held a vote uh, after my speech, and uh, there were approximately uh, 16 people that uh, voted to, uh, to put me back on the Central Committee. And there were uh, 11 people that uh, didn't want me back on the Central Committee and didn't want me to be able to exercise my right to participate in the, in the government and the process of, uh, of representative uh, government. So uh, you'll see my little speech where I defend myself and my independent campaign for Congress. And, uh, and you don't see me uh, attacking the party, just uh, advocating a different, uh, a different viewpoint that I believe uh, that the people want to hear uh, expressed. So uh, thank you for watching this video, and uh, I appreciate uh, everything you've done to uh, support me in this campaign. I don't ask for votes. I don't ask for money. I just ask for uh, signatures to be able to participate uh, in the primary process uh, for next year. Thank you. Bye-bye. Initially, I don't know if anyone knows me, but I'm Brian Jack Holder. I've lived in Council Bluffs uh, my whole life, north of town near Crescent. My uh, dad was a teacher and a school principal and a high school guidance counselor here in Council Bluffs for about 30 some years. So I know a lot of people in the educational community. I graduated from St. Albert High School. I went to Iowa Western on a basketball scholarship, but I was diagnosed with a degenerative uh, incurable spinal disease when I was 18. So I was unable to fulfill my obligations under scholarship to play basketball. 
My sophomore year, I still wanted to contribute because they did pay me the money to go to Iowa Western. And uh, so I walked on the baseball team and I was a pitcher. I wasn't very good, but uh, I always wanted to live up to my, uh, to my dad because he was a, a great high school athlete. I've got his, his scrapbook here from high school. He won uh, two uh, state championships at Thomas Jefferson High School. So my dream was just to make my dad proud. And uh, this is the jersey I wore my sophomore year at Iowa Western. And I've kept it all these years as a reminder of my father and what he means to me and the sacrifice that, that he gave up a lot to, to keep teach me and coach me when I was a kid. So. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I got involved here. Uh, Naomi asked me uh, to help out, out at the booth at the fair, and so I, I did that, and I've met some really great people, and this has been a wonderful experience in self-government, and I want to be involved in the party and be a part of the central committee. I think I bring some, some abilities uh, to film these meetings and film the speeches and help all the candidates and the elected officials get their message out to the community because uh, it's 2015 now and we should have a lot of transparency in our government. There's really no excuses not to have any transparency. And the reason I film myself is I've never been a somebody that searches out the spotlight. I'm not into self, uh, self uh, aggrandizement or anything like that. But I'm doing this to show that this is the kind of transparency that I demand of someone that's going to represent me in the, at the federal level in Congress. And uh, I didn't decide to run for Congress until about a year ago. And I didn't get into the, the race late. So I made my own campaign sign. I, uh, and I'll cut this thing off that says nominated by petition because underneath it it says Republican primary candidate for Congress. So. I didn't get enough signatures. I, I had about two months to get 2,000 signatures, and I didn't have enough money and enough time to go around the, all 16 counties and get signatures. So, But I explained to everyone back in January that I'd be running an independent campaign in the summer. I was completely transparent about all of my political activities. I haven't been hiding anything from anybody. So I did everything I could this spring to film all the speeches from all the six of the congressional candidates in the third district race. And I posted it on my YouTube channel. So if people go there, they can watch all the speeches. And they can see that I actually have contributed something I think is substantial to the Republican Party of Iowa and the Pot County Republican Party. And I didn't take a single penny to film all these speeches, to stay up all night, to upload them. I did this to help all of us out, to get the message out, because there needs to be more communication. The country has some serious, serious problems. And Steve's going to talk about our dollar and how... You know, there, there's a lot of dangerous, evil things that could happen if the dollar collapses. You know, martial law and that kind of stuff. And a lot of people don't want to talk about it, don't want to think about it. But somebody has to be the voice of reason and talk about these things. So I uh, decided once I was going to run for Congress, I wasn't going to ask anyone for any money. My mother bought me this book when I was a kid. and It sat around for 20 years. I didn't get a chance to read from it, but I started reading it about a year ago. And I read about James Madison, the father of our Constitution. And I didn't know this, but he uh, ran for the Virginia legislature for the first time. And at the time, it was common for the candidates to provide whiskey to the other to the voters, to, to ply them, to get them to vote for him. I refused to do that. I, I refused to take money. And I refused to make promises, because I'm just a citizen. I'm just a concerned citizen. I want us all to be able to have a seat at the table to discuss all these issues. So that's why I ran. I didn't get on the ballot, but I did everything I could to help the Republican Party out. So once I declared as an independent, I made this sign, and I went around and I got 400 and some signatures, face to face, myself, because I feel that's the way that you make a connection to the, to the voters. You don't just have proxies go and get signatures. I know that's the way things have always been done, but that's no way to, to uh, I don't believe there's consent of the governed, but that's really no way to connect with the voters. So. I was expelled from the Iowa State Fair for wearing this sign. They said I was soliciting. Well, I think the First Amendment protects this kind of expressive activity and free speech, so they sent nine security guards to kick me out of the fair. Now the beauty of this is that the next day I filed my paperwork to get on the ballot for Congress. Two days later I got to give a speech at the Des Moines Register soapbox. Now the Register filmed David's speech, they filmed Stacy's speech, they put them online. 
They didn't do that for me because obviously they don't want the message of liberty to get out to the public. So I filmed the speech myself. I put it online. I didn't knock David or Stacy or anything like that. I talked about how more of us need to get involved in this political process. There need to be more of us running as candidates, and there need to be more of us holding the, the elected officials accountable. So once I got on the ballot, that was pretty much it for my campaign. I uh, told everyone in July I would not do anything to spoil David's chances, and I didn't do that. And they had a debate at Iowa Western on September 11th, the college where I was on a baseball or basketball scholarship, where I played baseball, and uh, they kept me out of the, the debates because I didn't accept fifty thousand dollars. And so the uh, the Iowa State TV board, and this was broadcast on Iowa Public Television, they came up with what they call a two point test to decide if you get on the on the debate stage or not. Well, this this is tyranny, folks. This is tyranny. I'm equal, the people that signed my papers that went to Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and Lewis Central and Iowa School for the Deaf and St. Albert, they were excluded from the debate too. So any of you that went to Iowa Western, you were excluded from the debate. This is absolutely ridiculous. Across the river in Nebraska, they let all the senatorial candidates in the debate. But over here in Iowa, they only let the two party people in. And you know, I'm, I'm here to fight for liberty. so. But no one voted on this, these rules. These are arbitrary rules. This is what progressive statists do. This is what communists do. This is what fascists do. They create these rules to tamp down on any political dissent. dissent. And it's absolutely ridiculous. So I didn't know the country was this screwed up, and, and we have to deal with this stuff in Des Moines. So my goal is to destroy this criteria. If you make it on the ballot and you're certified by the Secretary of State's office, you should be allowed to be on the debates on Iowa public television. There were three and a half some million people in Iowa, and this criteria kept two people off of the stage out at Iowa Western. It kept me and the libertarian candidate, Ed Wright, from being involved in the debate. And I don't know how you could hold a debate when half the candidates aren't there. So I'm gonna be running in the Republican primary. I've got about a year to get 2,000 signatures, and I'm gonna get a promise, some kind of legal assurance from the Secretary of State's office before I start getting signatures. So I would appreciate anyone here that wants to vote for me to be on the Central Committee. I'm here to help people out, to get their message out. And I'm here to have a discussion. And we may not all agree on all these social issues and stuff, but we at least have to have that great civil discussion before there's civil unrest, civil disobedience, and civil war. Thank you. All right. Those of you who don't have a chance to